and good day and welcome to this Focus On segment with myself, Tanya Habimana. And as we come to the end of COP27, conversations around the just transition, climate change, green energy and green energy bonds are still going strong and have been. I'm now joined by Mersha Geishas, Chief Executive Officer at Standard Bank Namibia, who's going to help me expand on Standard Bank's COP27 strategies. So Mersha, I'd like to start off by just getting an understanding of what you hope to achieve from COP27 and how's it been going so far? Thank you very much for the opportunity. I think I'll start with our purpose and our purpose statement is that Namibia is our home. We drive her growth sustainably and COP27 has really given us an opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to Standard Bank's um, a net zero journey. And I think um, the success of COP27 for, for me as a finan financial services uh, company has really rested on its ability to get money flowing for advancing the implementation of, of the nationally uh, determined contributions of various countries. And if I have to measure the success of COP27 for Namibia against that background, I would say that the country really had a very, very successful COP27 conference. As we saw Namibia launching its synthetic fuel strategy at COP27, the country has also launched a very specialized fund referred to as the SDG Namibia One Fund, which is uh, having the objective of crowdsourcing and finding innovative uh, financing solutions to develop the country's green hydrogen economy. And we've also seen the country signing various DFI financing agreements to the tune of about 10, million, uh, Namibian, uh, 10 billion Namibian dollars. And that really um, has, has set significant traction behind our ability um, as a bank to partner with the country objectives and policy frameworks to deliver on the sustainability journey. Standard Bank believes that green hydrogen will play a very important role in the energy transition alongside other technologies of, so, of course, and we are positioning ourselves to respond to the growing number of opportunities. Now, I want to talk about some of your, your projects, actually. So I understand that Standard Bank Namibia has partnered with, for example, the Namib Mill Group to finance its first solar plant. Tell us more about this project. Yeah, I think we have, um, we have adopted um, the sustainability bond framework in terms of which we issued our first green bond, where we really had overwhelming support from the various investors in the country. And under that green, uh, green uh, bond framework, we had said that Namibia has got excellent renewable energy endowments, which is sunlight, wind, as well as biomass, and land availability and is therefore very well positioned to play a part in the world's energy transition aspirations. So we raised this green bond to ensure a focused allocation of capital to renewable energy sectors, and we have therefore been able to have our first drawdown with Namib Mills, which is a food manufacturing company in the country that has also embarked on a sustainability journey. And we have drawn down about 43 million Namibian dollars that we've advanced to this entity. And the power plant is a three megawatt tracked uh, power plant, which provides for about 30 percent of the client's annual electricity demand for the poultry business that they are running. And uh, as to the best of our knowledge, this is the first plant that is operational in the country under the modified single buyer model opposed the deregulation of the energy sector in the country. So that's quite an achievement. And I want to find out more about the green bond specifically. How much was raised? So we have raised 400 million. Actually, there was an appetite from the investors for a lot more and the bond program was uh, oversubscribed. But we mm -hmm. had said that we wanted to first build a track record and build, based on the pipeline that we had, we were comfortable to settle with a phase one on this bond of 400 million. But we are soon to be working on raising a sustainability bond to continue supporting the sustainability sector in the country. Now, I want to talk about Namibia, as you mentioned just earlier, and how Namibia's, well, Namibia's impact in COP27 um, quite generally. What is Namibia's role in the group strategy, and how would you define this? 
Yeah, I think we are quite um, aligned to group strategy and, and its climate change policy. And we believe that as a subsidiary, we have a very important role to play so that on a consolidated basis, we can all contribute to the net zero journey. So the first thing that we've done is that we have built a five-star rated green building as our head office um, accommodation facility to reduce emissions um, from, from our operations. And we continue to investigate opportunities to do so for the rest of our operations. We've adopted the sustainability bond framework, as I've said to you before. We are aligned to groups um, seven impact areas, of which climate change is one. And under this uh, climate change initiative, we've got a very innovative solution um, referred to as MicroHab, which we are running a research and development facility in partnership with MIT. And this research and development facility is really exploring an opportunity to produce plant-based building material from our sustainable biomass um, uh, energy source in the country, as we believe that most of the building materials are carbon emitting, and we would like to produce plant-based uh, building materials that provides food security, provides water security, as the encroacher bush is really choking our underground water resources. It helps us to regenerate the wildlife ecology, and it also helps us to then produce low cost shelter and store carbon. So we are very excited about our role and contribution to the group's climate strategy. And what about um, your role or rather Namibia's role in terms of Africa's just transition? No, we, I think we have, a, have the best, um, one of the best opportunities to to um, have Africa's just transition journey because uh, we've got other technology that the country is ex ex exploring. But as I said, we've got very, very good renewable energy endowments and this green hydrogen journey will really set us up um, for a very, very big transition journey. Well, absolutely. And what, one thing I am curious about is how is green financing building the Namibian economy? Yeah, so as I said, um, this financing that the, 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 that the government was not able to raise through the Climate Fund, through the Dutch government, and through partnerships with the European Investment Bank will fast track the green economy and help banks to actually mitigate some of the initial risks that are involved in some of the new infrastructure and technology such as green hydrogen. So we believe that all the financial institutions and owners of capital have a significant role to play and that this green um, finance and climate finance that the world has now availed or the developed world, particularly Europe, has availed um, to many of the African countries, amongst others, South Africa and Namibia, will help us to just propel that journey and get to our goals much faster. And as banks, we also believe that we should be placing our capital in this green economy. Absolutely, no doubt about that. Marisha, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing some of your insights and strategies around COP27 and the just transition. That was Marisha Gaysis, Chief Executive Officer at Standard Bank Namibia. You're watching Focus On with myself, Tanya Habimana.